I'm Callie Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 352. There's still a little more work to do on the set, and you'll see a couple more changes take place this week, but let's get on with the news. Yahoo sailed past Microsoft's offer deadline this weekend without responding. No offense to sixth graders, but the press release exchanges between Microsoft and Yahoo have been more reminiscent of sixth grade than anything I've experienced in my adult life. It's like they're passing highly emotional, hormone-infused notes around the class. Microsoft's last note said, quote, If we have not concluded an agreement within the next three weeks, we will be compelled to take our case directly to your shareholders, including the initiation of a proxy contest to elect an alternative slate of directors for the Yahoo board. Mark Andreessen analyzed the situation on his blog and offered five possible scenarios. One, Microsoft could attempt a hostile takeover. Two, Microsoft could raise the offer to make it more attractive. Three, Microsoft could walk away. Four, Yahoo could cave. And five, another bidder like Google could offer Yahoo a higher price. It's fun to watch, but since Yahoo employees don't seem too over the moon about working for Microsoft, it's really a sticky situation. Microsoft walking away would likely result in a drop in Yahoo value. I guess the shiny vote is for a white knight to come in and save the day. Apple today announced a spec upgrade to its iMac line of all-in-ones, but what everyone is really wanting is a 3G upgrade for iPhones. I learned to ignore most Apple rumors early in the history of the brief, but the drumbeat just keeps getting louder on this one. First, there was the emphatic statement by Walt Mossberg that there would be a 3G iPhone within 60 days. Uncle Walt later denied that he had any real information. Then we started seeing the shortage stories. Apple stores around the country and later stores around the world have been sold out. None of those facts move my expectation, though, as much as the massive pent-up demand for a 3G iPhone. If I had a dollar for everyone who had ever told us they want an iPhone but they're waiting for 3G, I would be a multi-thousandaire. I hear it again and again, and I'm sure Apple does too. Tonight at midnight central daylight time, four things are gonna happen. One, this brief will be released in the feed because Mevio has a cool feature that makes scheduled releases possible. Two, we will go live on Ustream TV with Jeff Smith, who is launching something exciting for iPhone owners. Three, Rockstar will release Grand Theft Auto 4, and now that it's actually after midnight, I can tell you what Jeff Smith just launched. Ringtonefeeder.com is an innovative new way to get a constant stream of new ringtones delivered to iTunes every week. The ringtones are all original compositions produced by Jeff Smith, who you might remember from such internet hits as Dig the Code, Hello Hello, and Not on the Radio. Subscribers will receive at least one new ringtone each week, and subscriptions cost $1.98 per month, or $19.98 for a full year. You can subscribe for a free sample if you just want to test it out. Festo is a German company that created a beautiful floating thingamajig called Air Jelly that floats through the air with the elegance of a jellyfish. It's remote controlled and uses a combination of helium and an electric motor powered by two lithium ion polymer batteries. They call it an indoor flying object or an IFO, so I'm not sure what the ultimate purpose will be. It might just be enough that it's pretty. <laughs> Take a look. My promo codes GB1, GB2, and GB3 will save you money on domain names from GoDaddy.com, so I appreciate when you think of me and use them. I'm at Callie Lewis. Now it's Twitter time. <laughs> oh, I didn't say that. Whatever it was. The ringtones are all original compositions produced by Jeff Smith, who you might remember from... Don't laugh at me. <laughs>